just think that what I noticed early on would be just an inability to control emotions. I'll a lot of times feel uh, indestructible, like ready to take on the world, but then the opposite side is the dude that really doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to talk, irritable. Everything you say is an attack. So I could be the snake manic, where I'm very coiled up, ready to strike very ferociously, and that's the, the bad side of the mania. But I want to deal with like the darkest moments. That's the connection, like, music did that for me, it spoke to me, the lyrics did that. And as negative as some of the things sound, like, oh, heavy metal's negative, or it's screaming, and you're saying bad words, or it's negative this or negative that, no, there's, there's definitely a different message going on there. Like Lane Staley, for example, he was a huge influence for me growing up when I was younger, and really starting to feel emotional and depressed and getting those teen hormones and angst and all those things and discovering like impactful lyrics. It felt like he was speaking directly to how I was feeling and all the stuff felt right. I think I started to realize I had something going on when I was in my teens. Even if I were to look back at it, I maybe would have chalked it up to being a just ornery kid or something and just going through normal hormonal stuff. But then like now that I'm older and I do reflect and I do cognitive behavioral therapy, I can look back and be like, no, man, you were dealing with some shit. You just didn't like know how to deal with it. I think, you know, the one thing I remember saying, seeing was I saw Machine Head, but they were for, touring with Slayer, and, and I just remember seeing them, and I turned to my friend, and I'm like, I want to be in a band like that on Roadrunner one day. It just kind of gave me this feeling that maybe I could do that, and they really inspired me, and by 98, you know, Camaro formed, so it wasn't too much longer. <laughs> I was in a hardcore band with Jim in 96, like just out of high school. We were called Skip Line. And we played some shows, and we played shows with another popular band called Ascension, who were a hardcore band. Once Ascension fizzled out and Skip Line fizzled out, uh, the bass player of Ascension, Jason Hagar, uh, called me and asked if I wanted to start a band with him. He liked my vocals and stuff. I was like, yeah, but if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Like, let's get a practice studio, let's make songs, let's try to get signed. Like, I don't want to do this, just play clubs on the weekend and shit. The next thing you know, it was August of 98. We moved into Rock and Roll City Studios in Cleveland and wrote our first song. I mean, this is really bizarre, but like, spelling. To spell a word, you're literally like, this is to cast a spell. So, and I think of how impactful that is and think of the history of language and like, that's how we've communicated everything is like through word and writing it down and transcribing it and casting a spell and changing things. And I'm like, words are really important. So uh, then I really start taking things seriously. Once I locked in, I was like, oh, I just got a key. Like, I felt like I was, like, fiddling with the door all this time. I'm like, I think I'm kind of getting it right. Like, oh, wait, you, you just used a key. Oh. There are plenty of examples of dudes that wrote amazing lyrics that impacted so many people and myself personally that didn't have a tragic story. How long have we known each other? Well, 30 years now, huh? Yeah. Well, if you look at 1988-ish, I had to I had to borrow something from Mark off of his jacket. The first time I met him it was a Guns N' Roses pin. I said, "You don't like Guns N' Roses? Give me that pin." I still got that pin though. That's why. That's how we figured out almost 30 years. Yeah, which is interesting because 
he had just met me, but assumed that I didn't like Guns N' Roses for whatever reason. <laughs> Yet I had the pin. Yeah. No, but it, like the thing is, being from Cleveland is, it's like, you know, the Cleveland's gone through its ups and downs. It's had a lot of shitty, you know, a lot of shitty press from the world, like from the outside of the of the of the city. Like we've gotten a lot of bad, you know, this mistake by the lake. I mean. You know, At least we're not Detroit. Oh, wait, yeah. no, never mind. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> but the point is, though, it's like, you know, Cleveland's had a rough, you know, and I think that's kind of like how we are as our in our in our band. Like, we've, you know. And we would do a good chunk of our writing in fall and winter months and record in fall and winter months. So that gave us something to do as well. Um, but I think that environment adds to the texture of our music, um, the, back, the background we have, with old dilapidated buildings and the cold, uh, where, yeah, I suppose we could make pop happy sounds, but uh, it's just not It just doesn't it. feel yeah, right. It doesn't feel... Because <laughs> believe me, you, you should have seen my, all, yeah. my boy band. It was great. It's just <laughs> more of a... I didn't have the body for it, so I actually said, ah, I better do some heavy metal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Chimera here. Well, uh, now, as I was saying, the new album came out, and it's just like a breath of fresh air. When you listen to that album, The Impossibility of Reason, when you listen to the whole thing from start to finish, I get the feeling that it is a very, very personal album for you guys, and there is a lot of stuff within you that you unleashed out into the studio in those sessions. Like, we had this competitive attitude. We wanted to fucking destroy everybody on stage. We could either do this set list that we did tonight, or we replace... I guess that's what drove us, though. It was this competitive nature of, like, survive. Not only survive, but thrive. We wanted to be at the top of a pyramid. There is no, nobody else. It's gonna happen now, right? For those of you guys that don't know, the press, they call me Metal Moses. <laughs> And for those of you guys that don't know what Moses did, someone informed me a couple days ago that he smoked weed. I didn't know that. But uh, he parted the Red Sea. So tonight, Metal Moses is parting the heavy metal sea. Choose your side for the battle. definitely lose yourself. I did. Um, I definitely had moments where you get kind of caught up in the, the whole thing. I don't want to say celebrity dumb, but the professional, you're in the big leagues. Your life is crazy compared to everybody else. And you don't want to be the guy that comes home to hang out with everybody and you're bragging. And then you quickly realize that's like, uh, that's not who I am. What we always start with with mental illness is, are you having problems as a result of the symptoms that you're having? When we talk about bipolar, we talk about people that are both having those highs, manic, manic episodes, followed by the lows, which are depressive episodes. The data suggests a whole range of numbers, but as far as we can tell, about 25% of humans in, in the world, uh, but particularly in the United States, are going to experience some kind of mental health issue at some point in their life. Which is to say, people who are experiencing mental, uh, mental health symptoms and mental illness are not alone. What I find is that uh, people with mental illness have often found themselves stigmatized. There's a, there's a need to kind of express themselves in a different way or to get it out, something that they feel like they can't just get out in a conversation. Um, and it gets them starting to express themselves in a whole variety of different ways. And I think that leads them to be very attracted to art and artistic expression. I definitely like to have my art reflect my feelings. So I chose to create heavy music because it, that's the, and the feeling inside I had was to 
I guess, uh, rage or something and just wanted to scream. And it, it felt cathartic to and therapeutic to be able to not only express the feelings on paper, but then to actually physically perform them and have this exorcism, this release uh, into the studio and the microphone and whatnot. Um, kind of makes, not the issue go away, but it almost feels that you have a little more control over certain situations. Me personally, I was attracted to the tones. It just kind of made me feel like I wasn't alone with my depression. And it seemed like metal had just different stories to tell that were a little more grounded in reality that uh, I could connect with. In medicine, Physicians are trained to identify problems or deficits and get rid of them. And psychiatry traditionally as a medical field typically looked at people and said, there's someone with schizophrenia, let's get rid of it. And if we can't get rid of it, let's protect that person from bad things happening. There's someone with bipolar, let's get rid of it. Let's look at the deficit and spend all of our time focusing on the deficit. But when you're living with something all the time and the medications that we have are imperfect, and let me be very clear, they can, they're so transformative for so many people and also so imperfect for so many other people. And after we finish this stuff up, I wanna go back, you can work on something else. I want to you know, it is things like art and uh, uh, you know, expression and creativity and relationship building and a whole range of those other things that make life worthwhile for all of us. They're necessary, and they're even more necessary for people who have, uh, uh, are struggling with mental illness or mental health symptoms. And when, you, when, you're, when you're experiencing life in a positive way and you're experiencing positive things in life, um, well, in, in that case, then, you know, th that can help tremendously with the symptoms. These lyrics that kind of resonated with me, and I'm like, man, I hope my lyrics are resonating with our fans. So once I became cognizant that it's just not me trying to get out all of my inner demons, that I have a, I have an audience now, and I can use the emotion to direct it for for good. This is definitely the biggest production and show we've ever done in our hometown and headlining. So it's just in the ass back there. Not letting anybody back here, okay? So back on this side over here. It's grandiose, but it's also we're at a level of maturity where we can, we can handle it. They just, I don't know, they got me through a lot of hard times in my life. I passed out at work and I was sent to the hospital. The doctors looked at my blood and they were like, we don't want to scare you, but we think you might have leukemia. I just started laughing because I, I didn't believe it. When I was first diagnosed, I had never taken like Ativan or anything like that. And they just kind of assumed that with the diagnosis of leukemia that I would become depressed again. At this point I was on nothing. Like I knew I was bipolar and um, had anxiety, but they just put Ativan into my IV like it was nothing. 
first time I definitely felt more inspired by the disease. And then I had probably about three years of remission. I was able to go to metal concerts again. And then it was like, as soon as my hair was long enough to head bang, <laughs> I woke up one day and my legs were paralyzed. I was at a point where I felt so numb. I couldn't cr really cry anymore. I just, I couldn't really accept life at that point. I was just miserable. I spent months in the hospital. I definitely turned to music. And actually, I always listen to Chimera whenever I get a spinal tap or a bone marrow biopsy. Did you ever stop and think that I'd be able to look in your eyes and say that I was stable? That lyric by Mark, I would think about that all the time because I would just, my goal in life is just to get past mental illness and be able to say like, I'm okay. A lot of metal music in general, it brings out this part of you that nothing else does. It takes you outside of wherever you are and lets you escape for as long as you want. aren't so much different than Chris's, and they aren't so much different than Rob's. We're perfectionists, we really fucking care. We get really bummed when things don't go as well as we hoped. We take it out on ourselves, it, it affects the whole group. I was officially over it. Um, I didn't want to continue, like after so much had happened, a myriad of reasons. One, you have the industry completely changing. You have, we, we're CD salesmen. And now we're going out in a world where nobody's buying CDs anymore, okay? Now we're, okay, so how we make money? We're gonna tour. Great, the economy just tanked and promoters have stopped paying bands as much. Kids have stopped going to shows as much. The last tour uh, in 2014, I was out for close to 30 days and brought home a thousand bucks. And then if you have a dude in a band that has Bipolar, and he's the quote-unquote leader. Yeah, great. That's a great for team morale. I just am miserable around the band guys, and how can I be any kind of fucking leader if I can't control what's going on internally? Oh! 
to where we stopped, and I was just pretty much over it. We were in Texas on some mountain range, and we stopped at a rest stop, and I remember like there was like heat lightning going on. I'm like, oh fuck, I want to get a lightning shot. I've never got, I never tried to shoot lightning before, and this is an opportunity where I can try to shoot lightning. I'm kind of a deist, but I talked to God, and I'm like, if I get this next shot, if it's a money shot, then, you know, like, if I capture the lightning, then I'm fucking done with music, and I'm going to do photography, and then, boom, like, I got this fucking, like, amazing lightning shot, I'm like, that's it, I'm done, and I knew right then and there. You've done a lot of things to take negative emotions that, that were having negative impacts on your life. Correct. And turn it into these really cool, positive things. That's what I try to do, um, absolutely. And you uh, uh, also had an experience that I think is somewhat common, which is that you experienced a level of success in your life as a musician that got you on the road all the time. This sure. is the dream. And then it turns out the road is incredibly stressful, so you had a whole new set of symptoms. Absolutely. And it sounds to a degree like you start, you found a balance there as well. I'm curious, as you've you know had these different experiences with different kinds of mental health symptoms in your life, that you've then also found different ways of kind of uh, uh, dealing with through your work. Um, what is next? What you know? What, you know? What do you kind of? Yeah, definitely. So. so once music, I don't think music hasn't really ended. I think it was more of a hiatus. But when music ended for me, or at least I thought it was going to end, I got into photography. And that was a different type of creativity I was able to use. I didn't have to channel an emotion. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go out and just get pissed off or be angry or find whatever skeletons were in my closet and try to bring them out. Um, I could just create and... It was nice to be my own boss with that. Um, not that I don't want to share, but when you're working in a band, it's a very much a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to compromise. And this is a, not an art where I feel I have to compromise. I'm contributing to society still, and I can share those images with people. And that's one thing I liked about music was being able to share these experiences. And nobody gives a fuck about me not in Chimera. And that is what I guess my mass is to me, is I have this audience. My photos don't, to my knowledge anyway, mean anything to them compared to if I were to get on stage and perform. It's not 
always easy to express what you're thinking with just a paragraph or writing or words. And recovery is about focusing on that and figuring out how to do that despite whatever barriers you have, whether that's a mental illness or a physical illness or a social circumstance. When I'm looking at photography as like something to do as a fulfilling art medium, there's a major void so far away from connecting with the masses with music. But I need to do that because if I live with it in my head, it just gets worse and worse and worse. With photography, I can wake up every morning and create. I can pick up my cell phone at any time. And now I'm no longer in a bad mindset. I'm using a medium that I have with me at all times to constantly create.